Now, uh, Dr. Lal Path Labs also reported numbers. Weak quarterly performance from the company. Revenues were subdued. So profits dipped in double digits. Margins contracted as well. But what's the outlook as we start another new financial year? Om Manchanda is managing director at Dr. Lal Path Labs. He's joining us now uh, to take questions. So, Mr. Manchanda, great to have you with us here. Good morning. Thanks very much, Prashant, this side. Uh, so I want to start exactly there. With uh, would, you, would you like to give out a explicit top-line guidance for uh, F524? Uh, all, all, I mean, that will be most helpful. Go on. Uh, good morning. Uh, so I think all I can say right now is that we are entering F524 on a positive note. Uh, FY23 was uh, uh, one of the difficult years, not only for, uh, for the company, but for the entire industry because... Uh, COVID revenues fell very sharply to the extent of 85-90%, and that put the entire industry in a bit of a financial sort of management stress because it was very difficult to pull back all the cost. Uh, but I think I'm happy to say that we, that's behind us. Now we are entering FY24 on a much more positive note. We have a smoother uh, sort of baseline. And uh, competitive intensity also in the business actually has somewhat reduced the, what we saw uh, probably a year back. I think overall we are entering FI24 on a very positive note. Mm. Uh, Mr. Manchanda, uh, did non-COVID revenues, so COVID revenues fell, and uh, that's understandable, but it's not uh, possible to bring down costs related to that at the same level, at the same pace. Uh, but uh, it'll happen in FI24 is what you're telling us. Uh, but non-COVID revenues uh, also remain sluggish. Could you tell us in the fourth quarter, uh, did you see a decline as compared to the previous quarter for, for, that, for that segment? For non-COVID, you mean? Yes. Yeah, I think for the last couple of years, we've been seeing a very uh, flattish pattern between Q3 and Q4. Uh, Q3 used to be earlier, a weaker quarter, but uh, for the last couple of years, I'm noticing that our uh, Q1, Q3, and Q4 are very similar quarters. So I'm really not bothered about that. But overall, I think Q4, if you look at standalone, our non-COVID growths are fairly okay. And... Uh, also, one must see that the uh, last two, three years, one has not been able to take a price increase. For the mm -hmm. first time, we took price increase in the month of February, which is a, also a positive news because we didn't see much of resistance coming back from the market. So I think mm -hmm. overall, I would say that our ability to take price increase is much better now than what we were seeing earlier. All right. Uh, Mr. Manchanda, you know, uh, we noted that, and you know, that's why I think the realization per patient went up to around 770 rupees approximately. Since that last right. price increase got absorbed, do you think that you'll be taking any more price increases? Where do you expect realizations to stabilize that? And also in terms of a volume growth number, some part of the street was expecting a little bit a higher number in quarter four. What kind of volume growth are you looking at in FY24 if you compare it with FY23? Uh, let me first address the, your, your observation about revenue per patient. It has definitely gone up, which is a positive news. Uh, it's not only just because of price increase, but also if you notice contribution from uh, bundle packages, uh, our brand name is Swastfit, that has sharply gone up to 22%. That also yes. has contributed to higher revenue per patient. Even though there is a mixed change also we're observing because high-end test portfolio is growing much faster, uh, there the realizations are much higher. So all that is contributing to higher realization per patient. I think your mm -hmm. second question is whether... Uh, we'd be taking another price increase. Probably not yet. It's just began in the month of February. We would wait and watch as to how it goes. Uh, but obviously, some bit of rebalancing is already happening uh, in terms of routine tests and high-end tests over a period of time. And we will continue to uh, look at this area as well as we go along. Okay. Mm. That's about the prices and volumes. What is the broad number you can guide uh, for FI24? Yeah, if you look at last three, four years, CAGR, uh, we are noticing that our average volume growth is about 8 to 9 percent. And I think we are hopeful that we should continue to keep keep that number intact. Uh, you also should see that volumes actually have two aspects. One is a patient visit. Uh, that's a number which is reported uh, right now. But we are also seeing a very uh, good growth in number of tests per patient, which is contributing higher sample growth. So I think there is a bit of an interplay between number of tests per patient and the, and the number of visits. So I think overall, we are very confident of sustaining the growth that we have experienced in the past. All right. And uh, Swashfist, as you mentioned, that's around 22% now. Where do you see that number right. headed? Because it's been growing quite well and it's you know helping the overall numbers as well. 
Yeah, I think it's clearly providing value to virtually every stakeholder. Even it's very easy for medical fraternity to prescribe this test, uh, swast fit. Uh, it probably covers all the liver function, kidney function, and all these tests together. It's a great value for money for the patient as well because in one go they're able to test uh, uh, test related to many organs. And for us also, it simplifies the business operations because one tube just gets loaded on the machine and you can do all these tests. So I think market is clearly moving towards uh, where uh, uh, screening packages are really gaining ground. And there's other part of the business, which is illness part, which is highly specialized part. I think uh, I can clearly see the divide between routine tests, which is bundled, and high-end tests, which are uh, prescribed by high-end doctors. So I, I, I'm very bullish about this whole uh, bundle package is going forward. What, what's yeah. the price of uh, Swastvit now for the, for the package now? Oh, it's actually there are multiple price points depending on the basic okay. going up to very high yeah. end. So I think it ranges between 800 to three, 4,000 bucks. So, but there are multiple price points at which we operate. Okay, got that. Mr. Manchandar, hi, good morning. I uh, want to get your uh, sense on the suburban business as well and how that's shaping up, how much contribution you're expecting. And I believe margins for suburban were somewhere in the vicinity of 12%. Have they improved now? Yeah. And that brings me to the overall picture. I mean, also give us a sense of guidance on uh, FY24, uh, composite blended margins for Dr. Lal Path Labs. Now that you're saying competitive intensity is reducing, can we start seeing margins get back to somewhere, I mean, close to the earlier highs? Uh, uh, let me first address the suburban piece. I think we are fairly confident of uh, as we go into FY24 for suburban. I think the last year was uh, we've achieved a couple of things. One is, of course, a transition from uh, earlier sort of management structure to a very professional structure now. We've also launched a, a very big reference lab in the city of Mumbai. And overall, uh, if you if you study data of suburban last year, uh, it had virtually 50% of turnover coming from COVID. And actually, we managed this whole transition of uh, COVID virtually falling from 113 crore to 9 crore and pulling back cost. I think we are fairly pleased with our performance of managing EBITDA of, with such a high fall of COVID. And now it mimics uh, what this business was pre-COVID times. And we, we know that this, this business didn't have very high margin compared to what uh, we have in the parent company. Mm -hmm. But 155 crore of base, 80% of it coming from Mumbai City, I think it's a very great platform for us to go, go in the region no, of no, Mumbai. No, no, not at all uh, sort of uh, debating that. I just want to understand what's right. the differential between suburban margins and parent company margins. And going forward, when you put the two together, FY24, what's the margin outlook? So uh, our margin outlook is still in the range of about 24, 25%. Uh, we know that suburban is still about 12%. It is a bit dilutive, but it's all baked in in the FY23 margin. So we continue to hope that FY24 will be very similar to what we have delivered last year. Okay. All right. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Lal, uh, and uh, full year will be 20, around 25% margins, right? Yeah, in that range of in yeah, that range. 20, 20, 25% range. Okay. Got that. Thank you very much. Appreciate you joining in. It's always a pleasure speaking with you, sir. Good luck. Uh, so that's uh, Dr. Lal Pathlabs with the uh, perspective on what the future holds for them. Well.